France is set to become the first nation to send Western-designed armored vehicles to Ukraine to help fight Russia's aggression. The World Health Organization warns China is underrepresenting the true impact of its COVID-19 surge, raising concerns about what this means for transmission abroad. A second day of conflict and chaos in the Republican-led U.S. House of Representatives, as it once again fails to elect a speaker. Western allies have moved towards supplying armored battle vehicles to Ukraine for the first time since Russia's war began. But they're not the heavier tanks it requested. France says it will deliver light tanks. President Macron told Ukraine's leader Paris can spare some of its AMX 10RC combat vehicles. It's been gradually replacing them with new Jaguar battle tanks. In his nightly address, Vladimir Zelensky stressed troops needed even more military hardware. We must put an end to the Russian aggression this year, he says, and not postpone any of the defensive capabilities that can speed up the defeat of the terrorist state. Modern Western armored vehicles, Western-type tanks are just one of these key capabilities. Meanwhile, Russia claims a continued offensive in the direction of the Donetsk region, which it partially occupies. It says it has successfully repelled Ukrainian counterattacks in the south. <laughs> the World Health Organization has criticized what it calls China's very narrow definition of COVID-19 deaths warning that official statistics are not showing the true impact of the outbreak. The health watchdog says Beijing only reported 13 official COVID deaths for the whole country in December, after the government recently changed its way of recording the figures. We continue to ask China for more rapid, regular, reliable data on hospitalizations and deaths, as well as more comprehensive real-time viral sequencing. We are really concerned about the current COVID-19 epidemiological picture, with both intense transmission in several parts of the world and a recombinant subvariant spreading quickly. The sudden end to China's controversial zero-COVID strategy last month caught the country's fragile health system unprepared. Fears of intense transmission has sparked international alarm, with the EU becoming the latest to insist pre-flight testing and other restrictions on travellers from China. A second day of conflict and chaos in the Republican-led US House of Representatives, as it once again fails to elect a speaker. Motion is adopted. Accordingly, the House stands adjourned until noon tomorrow. Frustration for the leading candidate, Republican Kevin McCarthy. But he's not giving up. He's now lost six votes, having failed to convince 20 hardliners within his own party to back him. The humiliating standoff has paralyzed the lower chamber of Congress. McCarthy's allies have sought to cut a deal with his rebel detractors, but there is increasingly bitter infighting. We will compromise, but we will not capitulate. And there's a very serious difference. There's 222 Republicans in our conference now. So if 20 people are able to drive this train however they want to, 202 of us might as well go home. Until a speaker is chosen, no congressional business can begin. New members cannot be sworn in. No committees can be formed and legislation cannot be passed. The so-called Elgin marbles could soon be returned to Greece as the British Museum reportedly closes in on a landmark deal. After decades of pressure from Athens, the controversial marbles could be part of a cultural exchange agreement. The artefacts have been a source of rancor between London and Athens since 1832, when British diplomat Lord Elgin controversially stripped them from the Parthenon. Greece has long argued for their return to what many see as their rightful home in Athens. Proof of a Covid vaccination is becoming a problem once again for tennis star Novak Djokovic. 
He is set to miss two of the most prestigious events on the calendar outside the Grand Slams, the Indian Wells and the Miami Open. It's because the United States travel authorities have extended the requirement for non-U.S. nationals to be vaccinated. Twelve months ago, Djokovic was detained in an immigration hotel on arrival in Australia due to refusing to be vaccinated. He was later deported. Recently described as 250 grams of magic and perfection by France's president, the baguette is also at risk from surging energy prices crippling Europe. Some bakers say they can no longer afford to fire up their ovens. And sharp hikes in the price of butter, flour and sugar are also taking a toll. The French government is rushing to save traditional bakeries from closing, with the economy minister announcing a survival package to help tens of thousands of bakers. The three aids which the 33,000 bakers in France are currently entitled to are a financial aid window, a 20% discount with the shock absorber, and a deferral of payment of social security contributions and taxes. The state will not let its bakers down. That's the message from politicians. Meanwhile, cutthroat competition from supermarkets means bakeries are unable to pass on major price increases to customers. The Toodleed actors of Franco Zeffirelli's 1968 version of Romeo and Juliet are suing Paramount Pictures over a nude scene as it was filmed when they were teens. Olivia Hussey was 15 at the time and Leonard Whiting 16. They are now 71 and 72 respectively. They're alleging sexual abuse, sexual harassment and fraud at the court in Los Angeles and are seeking the equivalent of more than 500 million euros in damages. It's alleged the director Zeffirelli initially told the young actors they would wear flesh-coloured undergarments for the scene, but ultimately filmed them partially naked at the time of the shoot without their knowledge. Zeffirelli, who died in 2019, is also said to have told them that the film would fail without the nude scene. Their lawyers say the scene was in violation of Californian and federal laws against indecency and the exploitation of children. CES, the world's biggest technology fair, returns to Las Vegas this week. It used to be called the Consumer Electronics Show, but it now spans well beyond consumer products. And this year, organizers say the focus is on how tech can help solve the world's greatest challenges, like access to clean air, clean water, and health care. I think tech has a, with a purpose uh, is a great way to think about it. Also, tech for good uh, and making life better uh, and Really, you just have to look at all the innovation that's happening in health technology to find an abundance of evidence uh, for that. Plenty of health devices feature built-in artificial intelligence, like this pocket-sized virus detector. This is Virewarn. This is the world's first affordable COVID-19 RSV and influenza breath analyzer that provides a result in under 60 seconds. You blow into the device twice, and you'll receive a positive or negative result via a red positive or green negative LED light on the front of the device. This exoskeleton can help factory and healthcare workers easily switch from a standing to a sitting position without needing a chair. Very relaxed, comfortable, yes. The metaverse is another big theme, with many companies unveiling their latest offerings in virtual and augmented reality. A lot of masks are on display, but not all of them are about COVID or the metaverse. This one is a speech privacy mask. You can have your own sound bubble to, to create your own talk and to have your own sound privacy without disturbing the other, but also not sharing any information you, you might not want to share with anybody around you. So let me show you. We can't hear anything. And there are plenty more weird and wacky inventions on display. It's amazing. From smart golfing, to a smart punching bag, and even electric rollerblades. Organizers are hoping the show will look more like it did before the pandemic, and around 100,000 people are expected to converge here this week, eager to get their hands on the latest innovations and gadgets. 
Natalie Hewitt, Euronews, Las Vegas.